Welcome to the Morris Dobson Museum and Heritage Centre. My name is Ken Brooks, one of the tour guides at the museum. Today I'm going to tell you why and how we have such a beautiful museum here in Darfield. For the people who don't know where Darfield is, it's on the main A635 between Barnsley and Doncaster. It's five miles east of Barnsley and 10 miles west of Doncaster. Now the museum is called the Morris Dobson Museum and it's after Morris Dobson. And this is Morris, Darfield's answer to Noel Coward. Morris was born in Darfield in 1912. When he was 14, he did what most young men did at that time. He went and worked at the coal mine, Mitchell Main Colliery. He didn't like coal mining. And three years later, at the age of 17, he joined the forces. He was in the forces for 17 years, all throughout the Second World War. And it was here that he met his partner, Fred. And in 1946, they were both demobbed. They went into service in hotels, waiters in Torquay, Painton, and latterly filing. In 1956, <coughs> the local off license in Darfield became vacant. It was owned by the Barnsley Brewery Company. And Morris and Fred acquired the tenancy. They stayed here in the shop working, an openly gay couple, and the, Morris did have a little bit of abuse outside the shop, <laughs> but being a, a soldier of uh, long standing and uh, a good boxer to boot, he, he, he dealt with it himself. They, they were able to buy the shop in 1971 for the sum of 900 pounds. In 1977, Morris was 65 years old. He shut the shop door and he said, I've retired. That was Morris. Morris, a, an antique collector, this gave him much more time to visit local auctions, craft sales, car boot sales to purchase antiques. Now Morris, he didn't really know what he was buying. He bought what he liked. And I'll show you an example of this in a short while. Fred died in 1988 and Morris were devastated. He kept his ashes on the mantelpiece in the front room and Morris being Morris, he would fall out with the ashes. He'd take them off the mantelpiece and put them into a, a cupboard by the side of the fire. Then when he fell back in with Fred, he would bring them back out and put them back on the mantelpiece. This is the house and <coughs> shop. The shop is on the right hand side. <coughs> Georgian house, wrong colours, concrete rendered tree in the front of the house here damaging the foundations 
and Morris died in 1990. It took four years to sort the will out and he left his house in trust to Barnsley Council for the people of Darfield to use as a museum. <clears throat> in 1994, seven brave men took on the task of making it into a museum. They decided that they would meet for a couple of hours on a Thursday morning and uh, chip away at the concrete render. And this they, they did. They did this for a couple of years and they were going quite well but not a lot of progress had been made these are the seven men Geoffrey Hutchinson the, the chairman Sandy Phelps George Ford Derek Barnes Gerald Bradbury Jack Guest and Adel Bradbury Geoffrey and Derek uh, sorry Geoffrey and Gerald still come into the museum Derek, we can see him walking in Darfield, and I believe the others uh, are no longer with us. This is uh, Gerald Bradbury, the local artist. We'll have this down in no time. Our father. Have you got your parachute, Sandy? Sorry, Jack. I'm sure Morris didn't hide his money up here. You know, George, I reckon we'll all end up with a hernia. How is it they always get me going backwards? When I said it could be used as a seat, I meant horizontal. Sorry, Jeff. You know what cold stone can do? In 1996, after two years working quite hard at the project, the National Lottery had just begun. So Geoffrey applied to the lottery for £60,000 and it was turned down. So Geoffrey being Geoffrey, himself and Gerald Bradbury went to London to the Lottery HQ and asked why the project had been turned down. We've got a lovely building, all free, uh, uh, and it was a good project, and they wanted to know why it had been turned down. And they were told that it was because they hadn't asked for enough money. So Jeffrey said, well, what do we do then? And they were told that they had to come back to Darfield get an English heritage approved architect who would do the drawings and cost it all up for them and then come back to the lottery. <laughs> and Geoffrey said, well, we haven't got any money for an architect. Never mind an English heritage approved one. They said, don't worry, they'll do it for free. And Geoffrey said, where do we get one of them in Barnsley? He said, well, unfortunately, the nearest one to you is in York. And they gave him all the information. Geoffrey and Gerald came back to Darfield and contacted the architect's office in York. A young lady came out, did all the measuring up, costed it all up, and it was £164,000. Jeffrey went back to the lottery and the grant was allowed. So it got £164,000. The lottery then wanted to see Jeffrey's business plan. How are you going to keep this museum going? Where how are you going to raise the funds? And Jeffrey said, Well, we've got a cafe where we'll sell tea and coffee and cake. We shall show local artists work in the, uh, in the cafe and if we sell any of the pictures, we'll take uh, 
20% commission. It's, we, will, uh, we will lease the room to local groups, craft groups, local councillors, art groups. <clears throat> Anybody who wants to hire it, we will lease it to them. We will then have the shop where we will be selling local handicraft people's work. And if we sell anything, we will again take 20% commission. At this point, the lottery stopped him and said, this means that you're creating employment. And Europe became involved and they were allowed another 40,000 pounds. This gave them 204,000 pounds. It's now 1998 and the uh, building work started. The lads from the probation office carrying out their sentence knocked the concrete off the front and uh, off all, all the house. And uh, at the time the, uh, the, the men wished that they didn't wrap, wrap, wrap the fingers because they came back later and stole the Yorkshire flags. The contractors came in. The roof were repaired, the chimneys made safe. This is the uh, roof and chimney being made safe. And in 2000, the year 2000, this is the building that we finished up with as a museum. A beautiful building, a proper uh, colours, Georgian colours, lime rendered. Uh, and uh, you can see that the tree has been uh, chopped, on, chopped down. Here's another picture of the museum showing at the side here the patio area. Here we hold the uh, uh, Christmas carol singing. We, we can get up to uh, 100 people on the patio here singing carols at Christmas with a huge Christmas tree in the corner. During the summer, if you hear the fine weather, we, uh, we can sit outside and have our uh, tea and coffee. And we, uh, we do have small craft days on the patio. All this is to raise funds. This is the shop. It's been altered now. You will see a, a big difference if you come and uh, visit us. <coughs> this is uh, the local handicrafts people, local art, big artwork displayed on the wall. <coughs> and on this side, the, the the artwork by Gerald Bradbury and you can see books on sale uh, by Ian Macmillan. Ian is a good supporter of the museum and is in fact along with me another one of the volunteers. A lovely jewellery cabinet there you can see jewellery for sale home and made jewellery. We move there into the uh, the cafe, which is uh, where we lease the room, local art group. This is the Low Valley uh, art group. And this is Gerald Bradbury on the left hand side. And in the far right hand corner is, I can't remember his name. It'll come to me later. He, 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 he writes books and uh, we do sell them also uh, in the uh, in the museum shop. This is the hooking and prodding room. Now this was run by uh, John Toulson. Unfortunately John has passed on and uh, the hooking and prodding group has finished now 
but the ladies still come uh, on a Monday afternoon and it's just a craft group. They bring their own work now and I think they just have a, a chat around the table there. Now for you that are uh, uh, efficient with your computer, uh, last night I put hooking and prodding in the Google search engine and nothing about rug making came up, so be very careful. This is the cafe where you can order your tea, coffee uh, and there are the cakes uh, on display. We really have three or four different uh, cakes that uh, you can take your pick with, all at reasonable prices. And this is the cafe where you would sit and uh, enjoy your tea and coffee. As you can see, uh, the artwork uh, on the wall there that we, that we sell and take 20% commission if we sell a painting. And uh, it's changed every month. And we have a 12 month waiting list. It's a very, very popular venue. Lately we've been doing an afternoon tea at a reasonable price, but this is by appointment only. And in our brochure there is the telephone number to ring to, uh, to make an appointment. We only do it on a, a Wednesday afternoon or at another time, other, t other times if uh, Hillary can uh, fit you in. And this is the uh, cafe then set up for afternoon tea. And another set of beautiful artwork on the wall to look at while you're, you're having your tea and a chat. This is the Morris Dobson room. All the artifacts in this room is, uh, is what we've brought back uh, from Cannon Hall. Uh, when Morris died in 1990, the house was emptied and it was all taken to Cannon Hall. And we brought back into this room what we can afford to insure. Now I told you that uh, Morris didn't really know what he was buying he only bought what he liked. Well the Jacobean chair here in the corner is the oldest piece that we have that belonged to Morris. 1670, 1680 and of course in this cottage the floors are a little bit uneven and Morris sawed one of the legs down to make it balance. Now, anybody who would be an antique collector wouldn't saw the leg off a Jacobean chair. So that tells us that Morris only bought what he liked. Moving upstairs, this is into the Fred Halliday room. This is Morris's partner, Fred. It's all memorabilia. Every piece here has been donated by uh, local people. You can see the electric toaster there, one of my favourite pieces. I demonstrate it when uh, people come in. We get a couple of reactions here. The older people say, oh, I can remember my mother washing in one of those. And the younger people come and say, what's that? So there you are. Then we move into the Canon Sorby room. This is the story of Darfield. On the left hand side here you can see uh, the memorials to mining disasters. The right hand side is the toy factory. And in the far corner is our favourite piece. It's the oldest piece we've got in the museum from 1520. It's a rag and chain pump. We're not certain, but we believe that it's the only complete rag and chain pump in the country. And one of the chaps, Derek Barnes, he built a, 
a small model of the rag and chain pump and we can show you how it would have worked in the 16th century. We've also got the uh, visit of the King and Queen in 1912 uh, to the glassworks and, and so on. And the football factory, also all the best footballs were made here in Darfield just after the Second World War. We can show you that as well. This is a display that's outside the uh, cafe. This shows the uh, all black leaded uh, fireplace, the Belfast sink, mangle, behind the mangle is the copper boiler, a wonderful display. And then just a few artifacts that uh, I take with me if I'm uh, giving a talk. Here is an early tea bag. I start off with the easy one that uh, the people can uh, quite easily guess what it is. But then we move on. Not many people get this. This is a, an optician's instrument for testing tra train driver's eyes in uh, late Victorian times. Here again, railway memorabilia. This is, uh, you would slide this down the button on your uniform so you could polish your button without damaging your uniform. This is uh, railway memorabilia, as I said, it's made of wood. If you were in the forces, the army, the navy, the air force, it would be a metal uh, instrument made from brass or copper. This is a beautiful piece. This is for putting tips on snooker cues. And I demonstrate this as we're going around the museum. Another lovely piece which we see plenty of now on bargain hunt and television programs. This is the Dr. McCora's Blood Circulator, made in 1908. As a blood circulator, you could see it working, but Dr. McCora claimed that it would cure anything. We've got a book with everything in it that it would cure. In 1912, Dr. McCord was jailed for three and a half years for selling a useless piece of medical equipment and fined $600. Here is another piece. The usual guess for this is it, uh, you roll your pastry out or putting a pattern on, a pay on the pastry wrong it's liposuction it's, <laughs> this is why i'm in such good condition i use this three times a week demonstrating in the museum and here is a kosh it looks like a kosh you describe it as a kosh but in the handbooks it's described as a life preserver used by policemen in the early Victorian times. A wonderful piece to, uh, to see. Here we've just got a small piece that were made by Sheffield University. History is bunk. Henry Ford was wrong. If we're not careful, each generation will make the same mistake over and 
over and over again. And we've got to stop making our mistakes, particularly on the big political scene, but on the smaller village scene. Unfortunately, we don't always put into practice what we've learned as, as a human animal. And I think it's important that children should learn to see how things have come about and just not accept anything just for what it is. We have to record our heritage. We have to remember where we came from. Uh, we've got to remember how people lived. We have to put ourselves into people's shoes. I think the museum's good. And they're very good, uh, the people that show you around. Um, I've learned a heck of a lot. Some of this stuff I never would have seen. I mean, there's things in that cabinet um, that you can look at and you can look at for ages. And then it's good to actually know what they were used for and have listened to stories, and especially from Jeff or when you're in the cafe, people are talking. It's good to listen in and get all the history about Darfield and learn new things about where you And these are the opening times after uh, COVID, which we're all having problems with. I'm going to put on Twitter and on Facebook something that uh, we're going to try to do for the month of August. But these are the opening times and we open at other times by appointment. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of the uh, museum and I look forward to seeing you in the very near future. Thank you.